About half a year ago, I released a video covering the world record progression of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles for the Nintendo GameCube. It covered the game's lengthy speedrunning history, and how runners discovered a few glitches on the Japanese version to push their times down. The main one of these was something called the Letter Glitch, which spawned a plethora of other exploits using a link to Game Boy Advance. Now fast forward to a few days ago, and I was doing some research for an upcoming project when I stumbled upon a tweet from Manaclaw, a top speedrunner of Crystal Chronicles. The tweet read, Sansa brought us some absolutely insane new FFCC glitches for Christmas this year. Now, given my history with looking into massive glitches, I decided to give the video a watch. And oh boy, I was not disappointed. Yeah, this thing is busted, but the story behind this goes a bit deeper than simply finding a way to zip across maps. But let's go back a bit to earlier this year, October 14th to be precise. This is Zack, and he's a glitch hunter who's contributed quite a bit to some other games in the speedrunning community. So I think the primary one, the first one I did was Star Fox Adventures. I found a lot of stuff and the most notable one was a, you know, a skip to cut three hours from the game. You basically just swim to the end of the game from the start of the game. And the next game is Twilight Princess. And that game I was not as lucky with, right? There's a lot of people who glitch hunt that game. So the only time save I found was like a four second time save in 100%. After joining the Crystal Chronicles speedrunning discord a few months prior, Zack would eventually ask if there was a co-op any percent tool assisted speedrun never done for the game. A short conversation would occur between him and Tasser Wabmiar, mainly about some tools used to task some GameCube games, and that was pretty much it for the time being. Talk from Zack would go quiet until about a couple months later on December 7th, when Zack randomly posted a weird exploit that made the GBA icon disappear on the US version. Now this random glitch would be completely useless, but as Zack dove into the Pandora's box that was the GBA, he would start to post even more glitches involving the Link console over the next two weeks or so. For those who don't know, on the Japanese version of Crystal Chronicles, there's a specific exploit when reading a letter on a GBA. Backing out of the letter by using the select button enables the letter glitch, and lets players perform other glitches as I mentioned just a bit ago. One of these is the Infinite Gill glitch. When dropping gill while in the letter glitch state, the GBA won't update the gill count when it's dropped, but the overall gill count will show as increased when leaving and re-entering that menu. The second one, GBA Equip Swap, or GES for short, only works with specific letters but produces some pretty wild results. There's a lot of complicated details here, but the idea was to have a type of equipment's pointer assigned to a slot in the inventory and then have a weapon in that specific slot prior to doing the letter glitch. This allowed weapons to be equipped in other places and not just in the weapon slot, increasing the player's strength immensely. Funny enough, this glitch was brute forced into working by the community. They didn't have anyone like Zack to hone in on specific things that could work, and up until now, no one knew how the glitch exactly worked. Manaclaw used these glitches a while back to get a 143 in the any% percent category, which was considered to be a run killer because he got perfect RNG by having zero extra encounters. Encounters are short cutscenes that interrupt travel in the overworld. There are some that are required when progressing the story, and there are others which have the possibility of being skipped. It's likely for runners to get several extra encounters in a single run, so unless someone matched Mana Claw's execution in perfect RNG, there was no contesting this time. This is one of the many reasons why a glitch that lets players slingshot through dungeons is pretty huge for the community. However, no one could have predicted this outcome with the way the glitches progressed. Starting out with our first glitch, Zack did the missing GBA icon glitch by hitting select one frame after opening a shop on the GBA. Now remember, the glitch in itself was useless, but the concept would be carried throughout many of the glitches he would unearth. Pressing start one frame after talking to certain characters opened an incorrect menu, and a whole other subset of things would come from this. Doing this wrong menu after opening a letter generated a list of glitchy items, and crafting items became possible from a wrong menu as well. The GBA seems to be the most broken thing, and nobody seems to understand how it works. And so I was like, okay, well there's stuff to understand here. So that's what I was doing when I first came. I was like, okay, let me just try pushing buttons on the same frame, interrupting things with pause frame perfectly, and 
just all of these frame perfect things that I thought might interrupt sort of the GBA to GameCube connection. There were just a ton of these like random silly GBA glitches. The some of the stuff at the time worked differently each time Zack attempted these glitches, and that's due to how the glitch uses part of the GBA's recycled RAM. The GBA, when linked to Crystal Chronicles, has two heavily recycled regions of memory, which are influenced by the game's various menus. One of these regions was previously used for GES, and the other region now for the new wrong menu glitches. These can be influenced by opening specific lists in the game menu. Now if you can get some junk data in these menus, then do the wrong menu glitch on a weapon or armor crafter, the game will start reading that junk data as your recipe list, allowing for crafting of items that can't normally be crafted. And of course, this leads into some more ridiculous stuff. The notable ones are that you can bring up a craft menu and like not like a recipe menu, like the actual craft window as if you're about to craft an item, even if you have no recipes. And this allows you to wrong craft, right? Because if the memory is set up correctly, it will actually think you're about to craft a real item. And so you open up this craft menu out of nowhere, craft an item seemingly out of nowhere, and it results in very broken stuff. This is all because of how the game's crafting tables work. For example, if the Lilty tribe crafts a weapon from the novice's weapon recipe, a partisan spear will be the result. For a selkie, the solid racket will be the result. However, this table doesn't just exist for recipes, it's available for every single item in the game. This can lead to some of the craziest equipment scenarios I've seen in any RPG. Like Manaclaw was testing using food as weapons for slingshotting the other day, and there was actually a short talk on a potato being a possible strategy out of the bunch. Now unfortunately this didn't get anywhere, but the fact that even a food item could potentially change the course of this run is amazing to me. There's also another small trick called double crafting. If you go to the blacksmith and make a piece of equipment, then hit A and B on the same frame on the crafting confirmation, it creates the item, but leaves the crafting screen up, letting you craft again. That's where we start to get into the weird list of items. The best strategy runners have come up with so far using this method is using a clavet to craft a steel blade, then double crafting that weapon into a glitch weapon called a lizard skirmish on the GBA. This lizard weapon can also be double crafted into a skeleton weapon. This weapon is one of many that can slingshot using a focus attack, but it's the only one most viable for runs at this time. This is because they're not actual weapons and are really unstable. There's even a weapon called Abaddon, which is easily one of the highest damaging wrongcraft weapons. If you use a focus attack with this one, the location of that focus attack starts repeatedly and endlessly casting a Blizzaga-like spell, dealing ridiculous damage to enemies. But sadly, there's no actual way to wrongcraft this in-game as of the writing of this script, but don't worry, there's still more cool stuff to talk about. Remember how going into specific lists affects the GBA's recycled memory? There's actually a glitch that uses a mix of these lists and wrong menuing to allow the equipping of weapons to any equip slot. For example, after crafting and equipping a weapon, if you go to the cell menu with the merchant and back out, the game sets the recycled memory in a way that it's referencing the accessories equipment slot. Go back to the blacksmith and talk to him, open up the item menu while the dialog box is still up, doing an A press and then pausing on the next frame will bring up a glitched menu. In this glitched menu, the option will pop up to equip the glitched item. If the player equips this, it duplicates the weapon and also puts it in the accessory slot. Now this doesn't work the same for every single slot, but it's possible to get weapons in all of them, and even reach 99 strength within minutes. This has some other applications too, but you get the idea that this is pretty broken. For those of you who like money, there's another glitch that might prove useful in other JP categories besides any percent where runners can glitch their command list using the JP only letter glitch and then manipulate specific artifacts to equip Gil in the command slot. Things from here get even more ridiculous. Dropping Gil can transform that command slot into any item, and the results are absolutely amazing. And check out this character just spamming Hastga, quickly becoming the fastest being in the Crystal Chronicles universe. However, there are limitations to this. Going over 600 Gil will crash the game. There's also the fact that this only works with specific artifacts in the inventory, so this may not be consistently usable until later in the game, meaning that this trick has more potential for something like All Cycles, a much longer category than any percent. 
There's more and more being added to this each day, but thankfully Zack is keeping up with the forum thread on the Crystal Chronicles page of speedrun.com, so go check that out after the video if you want to learn how to do these amazing glitches yourself. Now you're probably wondering how all these glitches change the game's speedrun. For any percent, if consistent setups are found for slingshotting the dungeons, at least several minutes could be saved across the whole run. Now unfortunately, the crafting of Skeleton is locked to Clavit, one of the slower tribes for speedrunning, and it does require some frame-perfect inputs. Also, the precision required to do a slingshot correctly is absolutely brutal. If runners are just even slightly off, they will launch themselves to a point where they can't return from and die from miasma exposure. Speaking of miasma, slingshotting through a miasma stream map would be a cool possibility, but these things are the most powerful walls in the game. There's also work to see if this can be optimized to get the skeleton weapon earlier than Mars Pass, allowing it to be used in River Bell Pass first visit, but as of this writing nothing runnable has been found. Like I mentioned earlier, all cycles has potential for big time gains, but there's no telling how much gill equipping will actually save. As for any of the task runs, all of these will look considerably different thanks to weapon teleporting and other things. Wabmiar has been actively working on these since the new glitches dropped, so I'm sure something amazing will come from this really soon. Slingshotting across maps, equipping things freely in any slot, and even using Gil to get any item in the command list. Zack's contributions to the Crystal Chronicles speedrunning community are massive, and they're only going to grow over the upcoming weeks. So before I go, I'd like to give a special thanks to Zack for talking with me about all of his discoveries, and for all the work he's doing to break this game and understand why it can be broken. And check out the description for all the links related to these findings. Also, huge thanks to the Crystal Chronicles speedrunning community for their hard work on testing these new finds. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and comment below about what glitch you really enjoyed from this video. Stay hydrated folks, and thanks for watching.